Okay, hello and salam. I greet you all with our Arabic and Muslim greeting. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. May Allah's peace and mercy blessings be upon you. My name is Dr. Suat Jassir Ali. I am the founding chair of the ASU Council for Arabic and Islamic Studies. I'm head of Middle Eastern and Classic Studies, director of the Arabic Studies program in the School of International Letters and Cultures, the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences at Arizona State University. Thank you all very much indeed for joining us today for an important, unique lecture by our distinguished speaker, Professor Misbah Zulfa Elizabeth, that we'll uh, I will introduce in a minute. Um, she's speaking to us from thousands of miles away from Indonesia. Before introducing her, allow me please to shed light on the ASU Council for Arabic and Islamic Studies that hosts this um, lecture as part of our lecture series. The Council for Arabic and Islamic Studies was established at Arizona State University to acknowledge the significant contributions of Islamic studies and Islamic civilization and cultures to the world at large, both historically and in the modern age. The Council's research and teaching programs seek to promote multiculturalism, diversity, interfaith dialogue, cross-cultural understanding, and the expansion of human civilization and cultures through Arabic, as well as other Middle Eastern languages, including Persian and Turkish, as, as well as other languages we teach in, uh, in our school, uh, including Indonesian and, uh, and um, uh, Hebrew, other uh, language taught that are not currently taught significantly Persian and Turkish as well. Um, the Council seeks to develop constructive academic and cultural interaction and partnerships between ASU and similar programs in the Arab and Muslim worlds. And this is, you know, significantly, you know, this lecture is, you know, reflection of that, as Professor Zulfa will speak to us. My own conviction has always been the more we study other literary arts, cultures, and civilizations, the better enabled we become to achieve understanding and to work toward world peace. At this point, it's my pleasure to introduce Professor Zulfa. A professor of anthropology, Dr. Misbah Zulfa Elizabeth, is the Dean of Social and Political Sciences at the State Islamic University of Walesiongo, Samarang in Indonesia. She is the Editor-in-Chief. She is the Editor-in-Chief of the Indonesian journal Soluego Walisongo. Dr. Zulfa received her master's and PhD degrees from uh, in anthropology, from the anthropology department and political science and social sciences in Indonesian universities. She taught many courses in her fields in several countries, including the US, the Netherlands, Australia, and Romania, as part of the program on conflict resolution and mediation, gender study, academic writing, and journal management. She has also contributed extensive research individually and collaboratively with other researchers from other universities in Indonesia and internationally abroad. She is a prolific writer with books and articles covering gender co conflicts in politics, post-COVID-19 family dynamics, Muslim women's uh, uh, dressing, and barriers to women's political participation. Her talk today will be on gender contestation in Indonesian politics, which focuses on the political process in Indonesia from the formation of legislation regulating women's involvement in politics to its implementation in political parties. And how, without any further, now without any further ado, please join me in welcoming our distinguished speaker, Professor Misbah Zulfa Elizabeth. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Prof. Saud Ali, for your uh, invitation in this uh, important moment, uh, giving the lecture in in your center. And 
my my subject uh, related to uh, woman politics in Indonesia, I think it is uh, very relevant to your center uh, to be studied because it will express the variability of uh, social and political expression in one uh, of the country having the majority of uh, Muslim. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for all the participants in, the, in this lecture. And I will share the, the subject of uh, today's lecture. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Prof. Yeah, but sorry, you, Ali. please feel free yeah. to uh, share your okay. screen. You yes. can share for Yes. Yes, we can see that clearly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yes, right. Because I can, I can see the screen even. <laughs> okay. Now. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yes. This is my uh, topic uh, for the discussion today: uh, gender contestation in Indonesian politics. Uh, thank you very much once again for uh, Professor Saud Ali for the uh, introduction of uh, of of my name and also my affiliation. Yes, I'm uh, teaching in the Faculty of Social and Political Science and my uh, uh, focus interest, one, one of them is in gender and politics. Yeah. I will screen the, this. Uh, it is okay for you all? Yes, yeah. very clear. Yes, uh, yes uh, I wrote in the, a uh, flyer um, about this topic, the abstract of this topic. Yes, uh, as uh, Professor Saud Ali told us that uh, the focus of our discussion today is related to a woman political process in Indonesia, uh, and it is related to the contestation. Why I use the word of contestation here? Because uh, based on the societal uh, theory contestation uh, involve two oppos uh, opposing idea. Uh, the one is the former, and the other is the newer uh, value. And in Indonesian politics, uh, factually, there is a war between the two poles of the idea. Uh, the, the first one is the traditional view or, or insight. Uh, that stated that women uh, in domestic uh, sphere and uh, men in uh, public sphere. And uh, politics is seen as the very male sphere. So it is forbidden, uh, if we can say it, for women to enter this sphere. And by focusing on the contestation uh, process, I hope that there will be uh, sound understanding on how difficult to achieve gender equality, gender equity and gender equality in the process of uh, political involvement of women. Yes, uh, as I said that contestation is a term related closely to competition and also conflict. So we can imagine uh, the, strat the struggle to obtain gender equality uh, must experience the process of competing value, included the stated value that uh, about women and men. And uh, based on my uh, study is that uh, this contestation is not only from the first time that uh, one idea come out, but it will uh, con uh, uh, constitute constitute constitutively go on in the next process. For example, in Indonesia, as I want to uh, talk about, uh, the first main point in the contestation is the enactment of the uh, law about the uh, election that stated within it uh, related to the quota of women in uh, legislative. But uh, uh, the implementation is still uh, not uh, in accordance to the law, but 
uh, still in other side uh, and if we can even reject the law it is the virtual uh, contestation i think so uh, for yeah for discussing uh, this subject i will uh, divide some term uh, the first we will uh, talk about the conceptual term so this is in order to make our discussion uh, in in one line what is the uh, what what we we we, we want to uh, say about contestation what is gender and also what is uh, politics and then uh, i will review the gender contestation in ethnography in order to see uh, how uh, the chains of the concept come out in the uh, uh, former time. And then, yeah, uh, and then we, we, we will uh, get into the context. It is in Indonesian political uh, context. Uh, we will start by enactment of the law number uh, 12 in the year of 2003. This is the revolutionary point in Indonesian politics and then the practice in political party level and I will see uh, three practice practices uh, it is during the process of selecting a party official and then on the time of nominating legislative candidate and also when determining electoral uh, district yeah this is the the point that we will talk about yeah and uh, we will start to the conceptual term. Uh, I will use the concept contest to, to contestation, uh, having the meaning of has the meaning of resistance and opposition. And uh, for gender, I refer to the concept that uh, it is a social social concept that determine the role and function of community members in a particular society, including the role and the function based on the sex. Yeah. And political party mean here uh, any group that compete in like election and receive a small group of food and qualifies as a party. This is a uh, uh, important point that we will refer to in this discussion. So I will start to the review uh, on gender contestation in ethnography. Uh, factually, uh, reading to the many literature uh, about uh, gender contestation in, in the literature of ethnography, we will say uh, in the early time, factually, uh, gender contestation in the former society is not too expressive. Yes, I, I said here, do, uh, do not yet appear to be different. All life activities must go on together and run by, by um, men and women, male and female. And even archaeological evidence show that in early time, women had very important and perhaps very privileged position. Archaeological findings show that culture throughout in Middle East, for example, for worship mother goddess in Neolithic era into the second millennium before Christ. And in subsequent dynamic, for example, in Mandeles and then uh, in the study of ethnography in uh, minor Asia and also in Western Europe. Uh, this is the start of the uh, decline of the status of women. This is because of the rise of urban society uh, in, uh, in which there are so many chains made by uh, the population in that time. So uh, the emergence of cities, uh, 
and then new religion, colonialism, and modern agriculture. This is, this is the point that trigger uh, the differences between men, uh, male and female, and then uh, finally came out as the contestation. Yes, uh, factually studying gender is a uh, very, very interesting study point. I think. And this term has long been discussed in social science discourse, but th this discussion about gender continue to be hotly discussed. In uh, we can find many, uh, many reference that uh, discuss about gender in many angle and faces. This the term of gender is a broad topic of discussion and has long been a topic discussion in social science and humanities. So uh, this is the frame. So we will see uh, the Indonesian context. What we talk about uh, the contestation in Indonesian context, we will see uh, from the enactment of political party law uh, enacted in 2003. Yeah, uh, we can see that Indonesian political life since the enactment of the law has uh, experienced a very significant revolution. Where we see that it is a revolution. We can see in the content of the law, factually it is a, a law that regulates uh, the process of election. But within the law we can find, especially in uh, in the uh, chapter 7, articles uh, 65 and paragraph 1, there is a wording uh, stated like that. Each political party participating in the election may nominate candidate for member of DPR is legislative and then provincial legislative and then also uh, a district legislative for each electoral district with due regard for women representation at least 30 percent. This is uh, very hard, I think, for Indonesian context, having the very uh, strong patriarchy uh, uh, culture to express express expressively stated in the law with the uh, possibility of 30% of women within the party. Even uh, on the time of the party uh, propose the list of uh, the candidate, it must be 30%. But there is no punishment here. Uh, after come out of this law, but also it is only may nominate. It is so hard to be passed in the process of legislation. We can uh, imagine at, at that time, two thousand and three. Uh, so many protests outside of the legislative building. And also inside of the uh, of the building, how about to decide the structure of the word for in the law? It is very hard and take too long time. We can imagine that there are two poll of uh, member of the legislative having the former value and having the uh, new value that support. Equality, uh, gender equality and gender equity too. And finally, the word of my year is negotiation word. Yeah, uh, most of the activists request that may year, may in, ba in Bahasa Indonesia, 
uh, having the meaning of boleh. So if you do that, it's okay. But if you don't uh, do that, so uh, there is no punishment for you. It is uh, uh, the meaning. And the activists uh, propose that it is not used may. It must be the word of must there. So the consequence of the word of must is the is there will be punishment uh, toward the party having no not achieve uh, the quota. This is the problem. So we can imagine how hard uh, this the discussion within the, the building. And also, uh, there is so hard, yes, uh, resistance maybe, or uh, angriness for the activists outside of the building, the legislative building, not only in the national legislative building, but also spread and most of Indonesian uh, region. The activists go to the uh, provincial or regency or city legislative building and show their uh, requirement. So uh, here it is, we can see uh, how to uh, pull of idea and then uh, take in the fight. And uh, finally, finally, we can see the result of the law using the word of may here. Yeah, in Indonesian word, ini dapat. So uh, this is the, the, the process. So I think this is not a usual process. This is a very unusual process because very hard work that uh, done by the legislative member in order to pass this law. And uh, we can, uh, I can add the uh, explanation here. Uh, several times, uh, not too long after the pass of this law, one of the uh, legislative members uh, that, that uh, who we know well that uh, he support this law, coming to Central Java, coming to Semarang, our city, and meet. Uh, to all of the KPPI, the Committee of uh, Women uh, Political Party of Indonesia. And uh, I came to in that forum. And uh, he talked about how hard to pass this law. And I have the occasion to ask why finally the law only the word of may in in the point why don't use must that imply having some punishment uh, to whom uh, uh, doesn't fulfill the requirement and he told to us that he even intimidated by so many uh, so many side and he also underlined and uh, confirmed that the only word that he may fight is the word of mine only yes it's okay uh, only suggestion for the party to have uh, 30 percent of quota a woman quota that is from the primary source talking about the heart of uh, the past of this law. Yes, this is uh, uh, the expression of contestation in Indonesian polity. Uh, to open the, yeah, the, uh, the, the way for women to get into the political spare yeah this is uh one point and then uh i said that it is uh have the sense of revolutionary yeah because we must 
see and uh, understand from the Indonesian context, not other. Maybe for West society, it is not problem at all, but not for Indonesian society. Yeah, uh, who have the uh, concept that divide uh, the role and function of men and women. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, I make some note about discourse and action surrounding the X-Men. Yes. As I, I saw that inside the legislative building, yes, of course. Uh, there is a hot debate and argument between legislative members and we can see who support and who uh, who didn't support and outside legislative building the pressure of activists not only outside the legis uh, national legislative building but also spreading to many regions in indonesia it is not only the activists academicians also uh, understand the importance of uh, the struggle. The past of the law is become the something that everybody learning for. Yes. And after uh, some time of the past of the law, what about the implementation? Uh, I did many research in the political party and uh, the reason result of my uh, my research is showing like this yeah so the, the law itself the implementation is in the party in the political party so on the time of women getting into the party uh, it is uh, easy thing because of the enactment of the law the answer is no. Yeah. Uh, what is the obstacle of women on the time she will get into the political party? The first is on the time of selecting party official. This is very uh, dynamic. Uh, we, we can see, okay, I, I have the note uh, under here. Yeah, this is, uh, I, I give the title, critical point to become legislative member. Yes. The first thing for everyone, every, every person as, uh, uh, generally to become legislative uh, party activist is he must, they must become party official or party administrator. Why? Because by become party uh, official, they will have uh, the ticket to become the candidate for legislative election. This is the point. So how can they will go into the party and become uh, party Official, so they they must become the party activist first. On the time they become the uh, party activist, so the official will observe them, which one the best to be recruited to become party official. We can imagine how hard this is. Uh, how can to become party activists for women, for example, having the burden, uh, having the uh, traditional burden. If he, if she is a mother, for example, she is a wife, she has domestic burden. So if we spend her time much more in the party, so how can their daily activities in their own household. This is something hard. So the first requirement to become 
party activist is a hard requirement for women. And we can we can imagine to that party activities mostly spent in the afternoon till night. How can if the that woman uh, go out from a house and until night, what is the consideration traditionally? This is the problem. So uh, the concept of former value and new value here strike in the first door of the party. Women must face that. So we, 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 we can imagine how hard to become party official on which women must spend all of the time in the party. There is two idea that always fight here. Okay, if they pass in that process, uh, she become one of the party official and then he, he, he become the candidate of the party. And uh, suppose he, he take, yes, and the first line or second line or, or whatever. In order to make her uh, to get more food, so, so the party will place every candidate in many region. It is a uh, electoral district. So those who place in the electoral, uh, the promising electoral district also, yes, war, <laughs> A word spare for women. <laughs> yeah. It is it is real a real war <laughs> uh, because uh, the woman really face the political war, not only because a uh, woman seen as the second class, but also uh, so many. Uh, yeah, dynamic outside the party itself. It is related to the structure of the party. Maybe there is, there is uh, a person having the very privileged position. So it can be placed in the in that woman place and the woman get into the under line. That is uh, the war. And also maybe there is a national structure that get into the uh, electoral district. So it, it may be change the position of women. That is the, the dynamic. So I, I, uh, I underline in my data that this critical point, it is a real war for women in political party. And it is really contestation because uh, the main idea of the party is main idea. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I can say here, uh, for example, uh, because the daily activities of political party is afternoon till night, usually in the uh, party meeting, the head of the party said to the woman uh, that usually take the uh, division like, yeah, uh, health or uh, food. It is a very do uh, domestic. Yeah, very rare women take in the division of like uh, international uh, apa, in relation, for example, or uh, yeah, only uh, in the division related to women traditionally. So the the head of the party said to to the woman, "Okay, please, uh, if you have the idea, 
uh, this you, you, you may uh, point out now, and after that you can uh, go home. We can imagine in the political party on the time of uh, decision making, and we don't, we are not present there, so we don't know the decision of the meeting at that day. It seemed okay, very nice to give the woman time to go home and back to their uh, domestic role. But politically, it is very, yeah, very, very low, uh, low level uh, participation. That is uh, something uh, critical, I think. Yeah. And uh, some note that I take in uh, the study at that. Political party member are uh, recruit based on the party cadre uh, from the uh, from the political process. And something hard that party activists usually involve in the party activities. Party activists is those are usually involved in the party activities. And the best activists will become the cadre of the political party and will be recruit, become the party members and become administrator team. This is point pointers that is that are so hard for women and this is uh, the next uh, step becoming the administrator of official of political party is prerequisite for obtaining privilege of being nominated as legislative candidate of the party and also placed in a promising electoral district so uh, what we see in the process of continual contestation, uh, I take the statement that a contestation is not a one point activities, but it is continual and a continual uh, process coming from one important point and i i try to make this model this is form of value and then uh, for example uh, we can imagine if we see from the uh, ethnographic data that is uh, before the uh, there are some trigger no uh, colonialization no uh, new cities no new uh, religion and no new agriculture modern uh, uh, process so this is the former value and all of that i mentioned is the trigger finally came out contestation and then uh, came out another value and uh, this is the former value, but little bit uh, adapt adaptive because a new time and continually it will come out like this. So I said that contestation is not one point social process, but continual social process because it will affect it in another uh, consequential uh, process. Uh, this is my model in order to uh, yeah uh, to describe the process of contestation itself and this is my closing yeah so uh, it is uh, what I draw from the study that gender contestation is socio-cultural phenomenon in the context of ever-changing society contestation will likely continue to emerge. Community distinction caused change 
in a concept about the various things, including gender. When change occurs, the power of previously existing values of former values will oppose the power of new values or the later values that image the result of uh, yeah about the society and community. It is in this context, contestation at the level of social and cultural practice occurs. And contestation to the chains of the value referred by member society of this community experience, a pull and push to win the contestation process. The value referred to by majority may become the dominant value, and this value may be old value if the old value are very strong, and they may become new value if many parties of society view the new value as providing benefit of them. This is the dynamic of value. So uh, the contestant, contestation process allow resistance to occur. Uh, discussing resistance, it is also interesting, but uh, I think uh, we, we will discuss it later. And in this case, resistance arise because of dissatisfaction with one of the dominated party. Resistance can be represented in a wide range uh, from verbal, non-verbal, and action uh, resistance. So because of women uh, yeah, have the obstacle to speak up, so the expression of resistance is whatever. Uh, it is by uh, a poem or writing, etc. Yeah, uh, this is as Scott studied on. And uh, I think the study of contestation uh, has not reached the point of resistance. Uh, factually, because of contestation will come on the resistance. Yes, the study of contestation is sufficient to capture the phenomenon of conflict, con competition due to the differences of moral value. In the context of study like this, the study of contestation in the context of changing society will always merge and attract attention. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Prof. Uh, so for the time, uh, this is all the idea that uh, I can uh, show to you as the trigger of our uh, broader discussion. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Professor Misbah Zulfa Elizabeth, for this very insightful lecture on, on gender contestation in Indonesian politics. Very interesting ideas and very interesting points. And uh, I, before opening it up to the audience, if they have questions, I just will make a you know a comment, so some uh, a discussion. Um, and for the audience, please, uh, thank you very much indeed for those who joined later. We really appreciate all of your presence here. Uh, if you have a question or comment, please show a hand and raise your hand, and I'll be very happy to come back to those. And uh, Professor Zulfa. It is very interesting that Indonesia, as the largest Muslim country in the world, with approximately 300 million, you know, in the population, and one of the female prime ministers and presidents in the world um, was, you know, Megawati in Indonesia, and and of course, you know, we 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 see a very, you know. Uh, prominent, uh, you know, presence of women in Indonesia in general. Nonetheless, we see the politics and we see the way that you're talking about contestation and and the, and the difficulties that women, in fact, face in Indonesia. And and so, you know, um, I wanted to to uh, share some in the context of uh, a class that I teach uh, the current text and women from a feminist perspective. And you know, it is interesting to see that. You know that you know as I as I you know argue that many Muslim thinkers have long argued that it is not the religion but patriarchal interpretations and implementations of the Quran that have kept women oppressed in Muslim societies. 
And so we see, you know, despite much Quranic evidence about the significant place of women, gender reform in Muslim society has been obstinately uh, resisted. And so, you know, it, this conflict is uh, uh, involves so many different aspects of it. And, um, you know, I use many uh, Muslim, American Muslim uh, writers, uh, including uh, Professor Naamad Barazanji at Cornell. Uh, she stated that from a Quranic perspective, a woman is a primary principle in the human pair of male and female, as is also evident in the Quran and the Quranic story of, of creation. And so what does the Quran specifically say about that? And that these are very, very dynamic questions that, you know, or, you know, were triggered when, when you were speaking about that. And, and, and the most interesting as well is that, you know, we see, in addition to Megawati, many you know, of the very few female presidents and prime ministers in the world, in fact, the majority of them have been Muslim women, and and it's it's a it's a it's a big you know uh, contradiction of their societies that are very very oppressive. Many of them, and those you know, I can share some of them include Banazir Bhutto in Pakistan. She was elected prime minister twice, right? And then we have the Zia in Bangladesh. We have uh, Tansu Giller in Turkey. We have uh, Sheikh Hasina in Bangladesh. Uh, Ma Mila Boy in Senegal, where, uh, Megawati in Indonesia, and Rosa in the uh, Kyrgyzstan, and we have uh, Kosovo, we have uh, um, Cyber in Northern Cyprus, and Aminata in Senegal as well, and, and in Mauritius, and, and, and so on. So how do you see this very big contrast, Professor Zulfa, um, that we have those women elected by those societies and the political parties numbers even though you know i argue that although except for maybe singapore maybe singapore you know um it's, it's a different story but uh other uh, in such a, you know for example megawati or or um benazir Bhutto, they didn't do that much for women when they were presidents or prime ministers but the fact that they were elected by the population is, is very significant now how do you see that, you know, within the context of contestation in Indonesia and in, you know, in general? How do you see that? Yes. Uh, thank you very much uh, for, for, for the uh, question and also comment of uh, the existing of many women in this world having the very important uh, role in their country. Yes, uh, as Ibu Megawati, he is a uh, uh, the daughter of the former president. Uh, so in this context also how the contestation, gender contestation here play too. Uh, in, the, in the context of the woman, uh, I think woman on the time he get the specific point, he must has uh, extra point than men uh, to win the contestation. And even uh, many, many uh, few also stated that it is not because of the woman in itself, because of there are other considerations. So he become the president. That is the, the point. So here, I think uh, gender uh, can be uh, combined to other point. The concept of woman itself, it is, uh, seem as the person that having uh, no uh, no power if he is only a woman. So this 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 is this is the point, uh, uh, professor. Yeah. So uh, this this characteristic never cut to male. If someone become the president and he is a man, so there is no discussion about why he he can he can become the leader yes uh, most of persons see that it is uh, the, the sake of his own capacity but not for women yes because he, he is the daughter of ex so he come to or he 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 is the wife of ex for example always cuts to another identity uh, this is the the point so uh, we can see here gender itself it's 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 not only the building of 
the role and function of women, but the identification for other process social uh, attached to the woman itself. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I think for Indonesian context, I can I have that that idea, because uh, yeah, so 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 many, so many. Uh, yeah, we, we can say according to there, this is popular contestation. The contestation that not only uh, relate to gender, but gender itself become one uh, core point and then uh, attached by the other identities. But uh, this is not uh, happen to men. So that is why uh, the, per the woman, if she become the leader, so he he, she must more, more, more than than men. Yeah. That is professor, I think. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. I I was on a PhD committee of one of our students who did yeah. her PhD on women's masks in Indonesia about two years ago, and uh, Bethany Ilyasin. It was a, a wonderful, you know, uh, dissertation, PhD dissertation. She went to Indonesia. She met those women, and you know that that's. I think this is very rare, one of the rare mosques, you know, run by women only, and it is in Indonesia. And and so yeah. the, you know, it, there are very many, very many interesting things. And I, I don't want to take all the up all the time. And I would like to first of all welcome everybody again. And uh, the Professor Peter Sawarno from Indonesia is here. <laughs> you are professor at ASU, of course, my colleague, uh, Professor Nima Musa, Professor Saro Risha, and, um, and uh, Miss Hannah Colvin, and many of you. Thank you very much indeed for joining us today. So please, I wanted, I wanted to open it up. If anybody has a question or a comment, please go ahead and uh, you know, raise your hand or just uh, we will be, you'll be unmuted. Anybody who has a question? I have a... Uh, Peter, have, uh, good morning. <laughs> Professor Swarnga. <laughs> Peter. I hope you're feeling better I've, today. Yes. I, I have a, a big headache still, but I, I'm okay. Oh. Um, so in Indonesia, if you look at the proportion of women in the parliament, they don't meet the requirement because actually they can have up to 30 I say 30 percent of the legislators should be women but even in the registration when they register the KPU mm -hmm. did not even have 30 percent there's just not many women registering so I was wondering if if it is possible that that that, 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 that there's not enough women in Indonesia. Uh, even I was even trying to think of it. Well, there is not much encouragement for Indonesian women to be to be actively participate participating in political arena. So I don't. I, I you, you know why is that? Why is it? If the law, if the law said no. women, my, women must have must constitute. 30% of the legislators, even during the registration, you have to have that, but it's never, it's not fulfilled. You have way less than that. So why is that? Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Professor Solano. Professor Zulva. Yes. Thank you, Pat Peter. Nice to see you. <laughs> yes. Uh, Pat Peter will come to Indonesia at June, Prof. Prof. South Ali. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the proportion morning. of women and men in Indonesian population, factually, uh, 51 uh, to uh, 48. So more, uh, most of the population, factually, women. But uh, yes, really few occupy the legislature. And uh, Central Java province itself is a relatively a developed province in Indonesia, but uh, we have only 20% of women in our legislative, in the provincial legislative. And uh, Indonesian in Indonesian level, uh, it is only 15% uh, uh, of the legislative member uh, are women. 
women. Yes, uh, yes, Pak Peter, really, uh, uh, the law is not implemented by the factual politic because in a political party level, 30% uh, quota is a hard work. If they uh, get into women in the list of the candidate, uh, it is not uh yes as we have uh as we hope as the candidate because it is only the uh, to fulfill the cre uh, requirement and also in the a government position it is only few women having the good position in uh in the government and also if we see in the yes academic academic spare in the university also uh, as such the phenomena so but, but peter uh, right that there is no enough woman in uh, role in indonesia yes the, uh, it is not enough and it is still in the struggle of course now uh, why it is happened i think uh, the answer is culture yeah, because of the concept about women and men and also the uh, uh, the despair of activities of men and women is so definitive so that is why it is hard uh, for us to reach uh, that uh, quota uh, i think it is uh, the perspective of anthropologists uh, it is my it, it must be start from the personal concept on the time the person uh, will decide what to become their children and uh, what to become to their children will support the person uh, especially in the family to give uh, equal and equity proportion to the son and the daughter and give the wide perspective about their role in the society. And it will not give the limitation for the woman to become whatever they want. And uh, that is why, by that way, I think cultural enculturation about equity and equality will, will be developed. And uh, that is the, the the problem. And because ourselves, it's still patriarchy. <laughs> Even we are women. In my uh, article uh, published in Kochen Social Science, I I I talk about Queen Bee phenomena. Although they are women, they don't like the other woman to be developed. So they will try to make a obstacle to that woman with the argumentation that that is not good for woman. How can woman have that idea? Yeah, th that is the expression of the tip of the idea of patriarchy. I think. That is what Peter. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, the Professor. Uh, do we have any other questions or? Yes, Danny uh, had it. Yes, assalamu alaikum. Um, I just had a quick question. How do you... Um, Danny had that, fadal. Yes. Okay. As, uh, how do you uh, navigate those power dynamics? How do women navigate those structures that have already been in place? Okay. Uh, uh, may I underline your question? Uh, how we can uh, orient the woman movement in order to have the equality? Is that mean? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, Danny, thank you very much for your question. I think it is very critical question related to uh, the role of men and women, I think. Uh, because traditionally women uh, stated in domestic 
spare and men in public spare and by complicated process as uh, education uh, to all, for example, uh, education for all program. And now so many women educated. So I think uh, that concept must be developed too, because not only men can manage the society, a woman also have the capacity to do that. So uh, how to make women and men still in, uh, Yes, hand in hand as the partner. I think that is uh, the 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 first point that we must consider. Men and women, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, as the partner is something underlined. Uh, men and woman is not the opposite opposite side. They are not. Uh, positive and negative, for example, but they are friends, they are partner. So uh, there must be a negotiation between men and women to do something that very important uh, for their best, for, for the woman, for the man itself, and for the woman and men as the uh, member of society, and also uh, as, as Muslim also uh, before Allah. So uh, they must do whatever the religion uh, give the obligatory to them, but they still have the humanity side to do everything best for their society. I think uh, the orientation must be uh, in such a way, uh, uh, Prof. Haddad. Yes, uh, that is one thing that I can point out. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, does anybody else have a question or a comment? Arabi Skander, you have uh, your video on. Do you have a question? Ayan, can you me unmute Arab Skander? Or if anybody else has a question? Yes, I have asked him to. Okay. And uh, until anybody, uh, somebody else comes uh, forward, um, Professor um, Zulfa, what do you think about uh, Halima Yaqub? In, in you know, uh, you know, Singapore has been one of the most been booming, yeah. you know, uh, economy in the world actually, and there this leadership of a woman president, so you know, significantly so. I'd love to hear your thoughts about Halima uh, Yaqub and and Singapore. Yeah, uh, I'm appreciate full too for for her uh, in uh, in her position as the president of Singapore, and actually I'm interested uh, to uh, see how her struggle to get a position, but uh, at that time I I see the. Uh, system in Singapore, uh, it, uh, it is uh, different to the system in Indonesia, uh, in which and, and in other country too, in which uh, someone will be, will become the leader of uh, a nation must struggle from the from the first step. But uh, the system in Singapore is a married system, so it is like. Uh, I, I don't I, I don't want to see that it is only yeah uh, simple but it is hard to but after because because uh, because after she become the leader in the country he must have uh, she must have the responsibility for the goodness of the countries but the way to get that is support by the system of the countries yeah uh, so uh, the process, long process before we, we, we made track before she become the leader. <laughs> yes, I think uh, every country have uh, their own uh, dynamic prof. Yeah. Yeah, the, the most important after she become the president, 
she must take the hard responsibility to become the president. But the way uh, to become the president is a specific way. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I'm opening it up for any additional comments. Uh, please feel free also if you'd like to write your comment or question on the chat. The chat is also open for if you'd like to share any. We, we still have a few minutes of your thoughts or questions for Professor Zulfa. Within the context of, you know, Panchasila and the secular constitution, actually, of Indonesia, um, do you see any discrepancies between, you know, women who want, who want to claim their rights in general within the broader context of the Panchasila constitution or those who are, you know, um, arguing otherwise, whether based on religion or culture or, you know, within the broader context, of, of course, of the contestation. So what do you, how do you see Panchasila within, you know, um, uh, as far as women's rights and women's issues are concerned in Indonesia? Uh, yes, I think uh, the discussion about Panchasila in Indonesia is finished uh, because Panchasila is uh, the... Uh, basic principle of our country is like an umbrella to all of the idea, idea uh, ideology uh, having the right to live in Indonesia. Uh, so that's why uh, I think uh, uh, discussing about gender in Indonesia, it is uh, beyond the Pancasila. Pancasila uh, give the umbrella to uh, the discussion about gender equality. Uh, it is very, very natural. So uh, the contestation between one idea about uh, gender role and the other, uh, in my opinion, it, it is based on the understanding about the religion and also the cultural uh, value. Yeah. And uh, general value of religion and also culture is uh, on the male side. So that is why uh, it is uh, uh, brought to the uh, table of legislative. So uh, the voice of majority of legislative member uh, is based on their own uh, original value. Yeah. Yeah, we also see, thank you very much indeed for this, um, you know, very helpful answer. Um, it, it is interesting also to see in general, especially in Muslim countries, um, you know, that personal status law has not been, you know, helpful or or positive towards women. So, um, you know, in, in especially now, if we, if we talk about the Arab countries in particular, and, and by the way, it's important to also uh, highlight the fact that of all of these many Muslim leaders, whether prime ministers or presidents, there wasn't um, you know any single Arab woman elected as you know as such. I mean, these are all Asian women or African women, whether it's Senegal or Mali or Indonesia or Singapore. Yeah. You know, it's the Middle East, except for, except for mm -hmm. Turkey. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that's that's very very interesting indeed, and and so. You know, and, and we see in, in those women's, um, um, you know, uh, you know, for example, if you go back to uh, uh, Professor Ni'mad Barzanji at Cornell, she, she says, unless women are recognized as having the same authority to interpret the Quran and to discover within its revelations an inherent affirmation of gender equality, you know, uh, you know, the situation of women in Muslim countries will not change. What do you think about this argument and within the context of, you know, Muslim countries or, or Indonesia in particular? Yes, uh, I think the, the development of interpretation of the religious value uh, in, in Muslim country is very 
very, very developed. And we can see in the, uh, the countries that you mentioned, uh, that's the process of uh, new interpretation uh, in, in Islamic, uh, Islamic discourse. And also if we see in many books like uh, Laila, Man. Laila, yeah, uh, yes, I, I wrote that book. It is very progressive. Uh, and Indonesian, uh, Indonesian also has uh, one literature that become the reference. Uh, it is uh, interpretation of Al Quran related to gender, gender two. It is a dissertation from Nazaruddin Umar. It is very progressive interpretation too, and it uh, it is uh, referred by many uh, many academician and also many activists. I think uh, it will affect it to the idea of uh, Muslim in general related to the role of woman now. And the data, for example, in the in the university data, uh, most of the best a student in one of inauguration is woman, <laughs> a woman. I think it is a fact that uh, factually woman is not that uh, they, they imagine that woman is so weak and uh, uh, bad educated, for example, no. And as women, I think we, we, we have the occasion and time to support and also to disseminate that uh, so many women has the capability to manage the society, to manage the uh, work that uh, face, uh, that give on her, for example. And I think this is our work. Uh, so uh, yes, we are appreciative to the women that can get the top position in their own country and their own uh, position. I think. And I think it is not only in the political uh, sphere, in the in the other process like in philanthropy and social activities so many women become the leader and i think yes. we, we we can uh shut our eyes to that fact i think uh, because that is important to to our society process yeah. absolutely thank you very much indeed and you know it's interesting to see that you know of the women that i teach in my current text and women from a feminist perspective Professor Leila Ahmed that you mentioned, uh, Harvard Divinity School and the uh, Women and Gender Studies Program at Harvard, uh, Dr. Amina Wadud, uh, Dr. Yeah. Ahmad Barazanji, Dr. Yeah. Asma Barlas of Pakistan American at the Ethical yes. College, and many, many, many more. I mean, they yes. they have written powerful book and um, books and and you know, uh, but but unfortunately, these are you know books in academia that we hope that people will read. Yes. to see, you know, those misconceptions about Islam as far as women are concerned. And uh, um, it's, it's, a, it's a very uphill battle yes. for women. Yes. Thank you very much indeed. Yes. Any uh, other comments or um, if we don't have any other comments, uh, Professor uh, Zulfa, uh, okay. I'd like to give you the floor to have your final thoughts before we close. Thank you very much indeed. Yes. Uh, okay, any, thank, any final thoughts? Yes. Uh, th thank you very much, uh, Prof. Saud Ali, for the time. And I think discussing about uh, gender equality, gender equity, and gender equality is uh, non stop and uh, uh, can be stop discussion because it is related to the justice um, how can we we can uh, live in a justice and uh, on the time we do the yeah discrimination uh, to other and it is uh, i think Im a very important discussion uh, for today uh, because uh, we also uh, yeah disseminate one of the phenomenon in this world, it is in Indonesia, and only a small part. Uh, uh, it is related to the political activities, and I underline 
the process of contestation based on the enactment of the law of uh, election. I think it is very small point, but I hope that uh, from this discussion there will be uh, another uh, discussion that will be more important to all the other. Thank you very much for the time, Prof. Saud Ali and all the participants in this discussion. I'm uh, sorry if there, there are uh, something not appropriate in uh, this discussion come out from uh, myself. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. No, thank you very much indeed. You have done a great, great job, a wonderful job. And I'd like to thank those who, thank those, all, all of those who joined us today and those who wrote on the chat, uh, Professor Sarah Risha, she, she said, thank you. This is a very good lecture. And uh, Rami Isaac, thank you for this. And uh, Hannah, I thank you so much for the informative lecture. Danny Hadda, thank you for your time. And everybody is thanking you, Professor Zulfa. And I'd like to join all of them to thank you very much indeed once again for um, your time yeah. and for the, your efforts and for the you know uh, insightful and very important lecture today. We wish you the best. Okay. And we hope to next time thank host you. you in person to come to Arizona here, inshallah. OK, inshallah. Yeah, uh, I, I'll wait for the invitation. <laughs> Oh, yeah, absolutely. The, invita the invitation okay. is open all the time. <laughs> we, welcome, we welcome you all the time uh, to come okay. to campus, inshallah. And uh, thank you very much indeed. And uh, thank you, Nayan, uh, my graduate assistant, for your help and for recording this very important session. Thank you very much indeed, everybody. And have a very good night. And we hope that you can join us in our, um, you know, upcoming events for spring. We have a film series. We have a, a poetry series as well as, you know, other, um, uh, you know, uh, speakers in the lecture series. Just follow our website and, uh, you know, and the ACU News. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Professor Zilfa. Thank you very much indeed. Welcome. Professor okay. Ms. Bah Zulfa Elizabeth, thank you and hello thank to, you. From, you know, and say hello to Indonesia, you know, for oh, us. Thank yeah. yeah. Thank you to Kartika also for attending today. Thank you very much, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.